Olivia Rodrigo is here. Make some noise for Olivia. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I am so excited that you're here. Happy to be here. Tell me all the things. What's happening with you? Um, you know, just hanging out. I put out Vampire a week ago. Nice. So just living through that, laughing, loving life, hanging out. So before we uh, started the interview, we found out that we're both Pisces. Yes, and you're triple Pisces. I know. You're our, a real one. Our birthdays are seven days apart, yep. and you were asking me if I like swimming. Are you somebody that loves to be by the water? I love being in the water. I feel like rejuvenated. Every time I'm like in a like an ocean or like a large body of water, I feel like the most like myself. Me too. Yeah. That's why I feel like I got to go to the, uh, I was about to say the gym. I don't want to go. <laughs> I feel like I have to go to the beach at least once a week and put my feet in the sand and like be by the water to feel so grounded. Good. Is that a thing so for you? So good. It's rejuvenating. It's great. Um, So the song is out. How do we feel now that it's out? Any anxiety or anything like that? Yeah. I mean, I was definitely a little anxious to put it out before it, it came out. Obviously, it's just so much pressure. I haven't put out music in a few years. And, um, you know, the success of, of Driver's License and Sour, it was all a little daunting. But um, at the end of the day, I just kind of try to make music that I would like to hear on the radio and music that I would like to listen to. And I feel like that's what I did. So the rest is out of my control. And, um, but yeah, it's, it's doing pretty well. We just went number one this morning, which is awesome. I think that's great. Super happy about it. Do you get super excited when you hear that? Like this has gone number one, like me, why me? Do you get in your head about that? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I feel like music is such a magical thing. Even sometimes when I'm writing music, I'm sitting at the piano and it just feels like, I'm just channeling something else. And so uh, I feel like I can't take all the credit because I feel like music is just so magical. Like, how could you just, you know, put it, put it onto one person? So, did you go into the studio and freestyle that? <laughs> no, I wish. I wish. I wish. I wish. Why, why do I feel like I read <laughs> that you just like went in and just like it started to flow out or something like that? Yeah, sometimes that's what writing a song feels like. Sometimes it feels like you're like out of your body and you're out of your head and you're kind of just like in the moment experiencing this emotion, just like sitting at your instrument. Um, but no, I definitely didn't freestyle it. I wish that'd be really cool. Maybe, maybe the next album. I mean, can can you freestyle a song? Oh God, don't put me on the spot. No, I swear, I would, I would not. I swear, I, I would just... not. I was just asking in general because I feel like sometimes being as though I'm a Pisces and I feel like I'm always in my feelings, if that makes sense. So I would just be in there in the booth talking about stuff that put me in my feelings, if that you know what I mean. I mean, that's kind of is what songwriting is about. Right. The, definitely sit down at my piano and. You know, just barf out all of my emotions sometimes. It's definitely what it feels like. Can I tell you it's a slight flex knowing how to play the piano? Oh, really? Yeah, I could absolutely. teach you. I, you know what? I, I'm not amazing. I can I can get by. I could totally teach you easy. I mean, clearly you are amazing, being <laughs> as though the whole songwriting thing and then putting out <laughs> records and whatnot. You know what I mean? I try. I try. <laughs> Would you say songwriting is low-key therapeutic? So therapeutic. Mm -hmm. The most therapeutic. It just feels so nice to have all these, like, this just tangle of emotions in your head and to be able to write it down into something that's easily digestible and con like just lays out how you're feeling. It just makes life so much simpler and it makes your feelings more manageable. Do you sleep well at night? I do. I sleep super well. Why do you ask? The only reason why is because I feel like sometimes I, being a creative, I feel like your mind races a lot and it's hard to fall asleep. Right. You know what? Sometimes I do dream songs, though. You do? Sometimes I'll, like, wake up and I'll be like, oh, my God, that was, like, the best song I'd ever made, and I can't remember it. Yeah. Which is annoying, but, you know, songs always come to you in weird ways. Do you ever, like, is it ever walking down the street and you're like, okay, I need to put that in a song. I need to do, like, yeah, this. Yeah, totally, totally. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that that's how Driver's License came to be. I remember I was, I was sitting passenger seat in my mom's car and, like, I was like, I, I know we weren't perfect, but I've never felt this way for no one. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine how you, you could be so okay now that I'm, I'm gone. It just like came to me like super quick, and I just wrote it down in my notes app, and a week later I wrote that song. But yeah, inspiration just chooses the weirdest time to strike. Do you remember what road you were driving on the first time you heard Driver's License? Like, do you remember where you were um, on the radio? Oh, man, yeah. I was in Salt Lake City because I was there filming a show, mm -hmm. and I remember just being so excited. I actually think before I heard it on the radio myself, like, like me listening to the radio, I was going on a walk around my neighborhood and I heard someone blasting it in their car while they were driving by. And I was like, that's the coolest thing ever. Um, but I'm trying to think, I think Vampire, the first time I heard it on the radio, I was actually, I was in Pilates class and I was like doing were a sit up you? and like the song came on. And I was like, wait, what? Like, is this my song in the workout class? <laughs> For someone that's never felt that, how does that feel? As a Pisces, take me all through that feeling, <laughs> that feeling of driveway that you're going. Like, how does that feel when you hear that song and you're in Pilates? You're about oh to do a sit-up. Oh, my God. You know, it, it's funny because, I mean, I'm so close to this song and so close to every song, you know, 
that I've written. It's, it's, it's me, and it's an extension of me. But it's funny hearing the hearing it on the radio. It kind of feels like you get to hear it from other people's like in their ears and how they would hear it. And it's you just kind of hear it in a totally different way, which is a really interesting thing. Do you ever get not in your head, like before you release a song, right? Any song that you've released, do you ever say, "Oh my gosh, I hope that people really like this." I mean, totally, yeah, definitely. But I mean, that's not, yeah. I I think the most important thing is to try to make music that you like. But I mean, of course, it's inevitable. You're, you know, you hope people like what you put out. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you ever like go down the rabbit hole and read the comments just to see like what people are are writing about the song and yeah and, and whatnot? Sometimes, and people are so supportive and so sweet, and I'm I'm very grateful for everyone's support. But um, I try not to do it too much. You know, every now and then. But I think you can get if you look at it like. Every day, constantly, you can just kind of get a little caught up in it. That, and also, I feel like it's um kind of like a false sense of hope. Not a false sense of hope, but a false sense of, like, security. Because if you're getting all of these messages and whatnot, <laughs> good or bad, it can be like, you know, I feel like mess with your mental health a little bit. Totally. I mean, it's really important to stay grounded in the real world. And, you know, if you, if you spend too much time online, you kind of start to lose a little perspective. So it's always important to be aware of that. Speaking of, how do you stay grounded? It's a great question. I mean... I think limiting my time on social media is super important. Definitely try to make an effort to do that. Um, I have really awesome friends and really awesome parents who are super real and super chill. And if I'm being weird, they're like, Olivia, you're being weird. Like, stop it. Cut it out. Which I think is like the truest form of tough love. And I love it when people do that to me. Um, But yeah, I think that's the key. Do you have one person in your life that you run everything by before you do anything? My mom. Mm Mm-hmm. My mom, she's the first person I play like every new song for. And if I ever like need to send a risky text or something, I'm like, Mom, is this okay? Like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. She's, she's the greatest. Does she ever, or has there ever been a situation where mom heard a song and she's like, <gasps> what like, are you doing? Like in or, a bad way? Not even in a bad way, but oh, this is, this is, this is intense. Yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, the story is that I played driver's license for her for the first time, and she goes, I don't really love the bridge. Like, the bridge is just really big. Like, it's kind of confusing, and it turned out to be, like, so many people's favorite part Absolutely. of the song. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, now I have to take all of her song advice with a little grain of salt, but no. at least she was honest. She was honest. Not for mama. <laughs> I know. Isn't that funny, though? Does she feel a certain type of way about that, though? Um, I mean... I'm I'm happy that she was honest about how she felt. That she'll always be honest with me. It's right. great. But yeah, I've, I played her uh, all of this new record, and she she really loves it. So got the mom sign of approval. Okay, so mom, right? Uh, how did she feel when you were like, "All right, I'm moving to New York." Bye, y'all. <laughs> um, my mom actually loves New York, so she comes and she comes with me and visits me a lot. But I I, I live half in LA and half in New York, so I'm I'm a little bi coastal gal. How did you uh, come to the conclusion that you wanted to live in New York? Yeah, I mean, we actually made a lot of guts um, in New York at Electric Lady Studios. Mm-hmm. Uh, we wrote a bunch of the songs there, and I just found it super inspiring, and I kind of fell in love with the city, and I've, I've always loved it, but um, I guess I always thought in my head, I'm like, L.A., it's like you have to make music in L.A., but making music in New York was just so inspiring and so fulfilling, and I'm like, huh, like maybe I could do this more often, and so it kind of inspired me to to make the move. I love it there. So you're in New York. Are you in your Sex in the City era? Yes. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm in. I'm so happy you brought this up. <laughs> have, you, have you seen Just Like That or have you watched every episode of like the original Sex in the City? I've watched every episode of the original one. I haven't watched a second season that just came out of it Just Like That, uh-huh. but it's on my to-do list. I literally might start it tonight. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> How do you feel that Kim Cattrall is coming back? Oh my God, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. You have no idea. It's so funny because everybody's talking about the way How She's Coming back yeah. being as though she's not going to be in the scene with any other people you know what i'm saying i will take it will i just want to see her face i want to see what she's wearing yes. i think she's the greatest is that what you do on your downtime just sit and watch sex in the city like what are some of the things that you do when you're not like yeah working i mean i definitely watch a lot of sex in the city i feel like when i was on the last sour tour we couldn't have any netflix on the bus like the, the internet just kept cutting in and out mm-hmm. but i got my tour manager she was so sweet she got me like every like DVD disc of Sex and the City of oh, all of the seasons. Really I had nice. them all lined up so I could like put them in like the DVD player and watch them on the bus. Um, but What's yeah, that? that was really fun. I know. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Extinct. <laughs> Speaking of the Sour Tour, how was that experience? It was amazing. I mean, um, Driver's License and Sour came out in like the peak of the pandemic. So right. I really couldn't 
watch the music, you know, affect people in real time, in real life. And I honestly hadn't done very many performances before. Like, Driver's License was kind of really my first major, like, song put on on a major label. Um, and uh, it was just it was really incredible. And I feel like actually going on that tour has really informed the way that I wrote this next album. I feel like I wrote this next album with the tour in mind, thinking, like, oh, how are these songs, like, be in, like, a crowd of people? Like, would people want to sing this? Would people want to dance to it? And uh, so it was super educational in so many ways. Did it trip you while, all right, you're on stage performing, right? Before you went out on stage, so you're getting ready, you got right. your in-ears in, right? Yeah. You're about to play your music. You're about to go out and do your thing. What is that feeling that you fit, that you feel before going out on stage and doing your thing? Pretty terrified. Pretty nervous. Uh, the first few shows, I was, like, so scared. It's, it's um, I mean, it's obviously just super nerve-wracking. You're singing in front of a crowd of people. But uh, I also think playing your own show is really awesome because everyone there is just so supportive of you. Like, they're there to, like, yeah, you know, love you, you and sing your songs. Right. And um, so it's it's pretty forgiving. Um, but, yeah, it, it's it's a really magical thing, playing live music. There's There's really nothing like it. You know what's interesting? I will say I get why people think it's a drug. When you're up there, yeah. you're doing your thing, and people are singing your words back to you, like something that you probably wrote in a bedroom during quarantine, right? It's the right? craziest thing ever. That has to trip you out, it's right? It's so weird. Like, literally, like, I wrote so many of these songs in my living room or my bedroom, and then, like, just watching, like, a crowd of, like, thousands of people sing the lyrics is... I feel like that'll never feel normal, but it, it's, it that totally does feel like a drug. It's like an out-of-body experience. But even if you think about the journey that the song makes, right? So you were saying that you were in your living room writing this song, right? Mm -hmm. The fact that you wrote the song, you went to the recording studio, you sung said song, right? Mm -hmm. Released the song, the song's out on the radio, people are consuming the song, and the song comes back to you at the concert as they're singing it back to you. Isn't that crazy when you sit down? These are things that I think about before I go to bed <laughs> These at are night. Pisces thoughts. Yeah, absolutely Pisces <laughs> thoughts. Isn't that crazy when you think of the journey a song makes? Yeah. It's true. Just why I said music is magic. Like, there's no, like, reasonable, rational explanation for why all of that happens or, you know, how it can unite so many people under one common shared emotion. It's mm -hmm. just, there's, there's just nothing like it. What is your fondest tour moment? Ooh. Um... I really love performing at Glastonbury. Mm -hmm. um, I'd never been to a music festival before. Actually, that was, I think it's the only music festival I've ever been to. Um, and it was incredible. And I got to sing <laughs> Lily Allen. Can I say that? Sorry, that's the name of the nope, song. You did now. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, okay. It's fine, it's fine. Uh, and um, yeah, that was, that was such an incredible experience. And I was with my best friend and she was like on that leg of the tour with me and it was awesome. Um, and yeah, I just got to travel to so many places that I'd never been to before. And, uh, I feel so lucky that that's part of my job and I'm very excited to travel to more places on this next tour. So when the tour was over, you playing your last night, where was your last night? Do you remember? Um, London. Okay. You're playing in London. Yeah. It's over. Yeah. You, you just wrapped up the show. What, what do you feel? Relieved? Anxiety? What? I mean, all of the above. I, tour is tour can be kind of hard on your body and mm -hmm. on your psyche. It's just it's hard to be away from home from, for so long, and I'm definitely a homebody. Um, but it's also sad because you you know you grow really close to the people that you're on tour with. It's like your little family, and you know you're in such tight quarters all the time. So I I remember being really sad to say goodbye to all of them, but happy to be back in my own bed. I I love my bed. <laughs> me, listen, me too. You know what's interesting when you say you're a homebody. When someone who makes plans with you, are you immediately thinking about how you can get out of said plans? Um, is that a Pisces thing? It has to it be. It has to be a Pisces thing. Right. Yeah, I'm such a homebody. Me too. And I hate when people try to make me feel bad for not wanting to go out. Because I feel like, <laughs> so here's the thing. I feel like our lives are very social. Mine, not as social as yours, but you get what I'm saying. The last thing I want to do is when I don't have to be social, is be social. Right. No, I completely agree. I'm so happy just being alone in my house, watching a show, reading a book. That's like peak joy. Me too. <laughs> I just, I just want to eat my snacks, eat be in snacks. my room. Don't eat, my phone's on Do Not Disturb right now because I just don't want to be disturbed. Are you the same way? <laughs> We're Keep your... always on Do Not Disturb. <laughs> We need to just eat our snacks, watch our sex in the city, yes. go for a swim, and then we're fine. Keep it moving. <laughs> Do you have, like, a core group of friends that you constantly hang out with? Yes, and I'm so, so lucky mm -hmm. to have them in my life. I feel like that's, like, the reason that I'm, like, can stay sane. I feel like it's just... They're so wonderful and keep me grounded. How do how do they love like everything that's going on with you right now? Like how how do they feel about it? Yeah, I mean they're so excited for me, but I, I think uh, m most of my like core group of friends I've been friends with since 
before I kind of went on this music adventure. So it's just nice. They've just known me through so many areas and so many, you know, different seasons of my life and they've loved me through everyone. So I'm very, very grateful for them. Can we talk about your music adventure? At what point did you fall in love with music? Do you remember the first song? Oh, the first song that I heard or the first song that I wrote? The first song you heard and you were like, I want to do this too. I remember listening to Royals on the radio for the mm. first time in like 2015 or something when it Wait came till out. you're announced. <laughs> yeah, so good. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just remember listening to it and being like, that is the coolest song I've ever heard. I didn't know someone, she was probably like 16 at the time, I was like, I didn't know someone who was that young could write something about just solely how they feel and they're not pandering or trying to relate to anything, but it's so relatable. And um, yeah, she's she's still a huge inspiration of mine. I think she's just so, so talented. That's the one thing that I love when people are just like writing songs, and you said this earlier, when they're writing songs that you want to hear, that you want to enjoy. And I think when you are authentically yourself, it always people, shows through, yeah. Right. People will just show up and and show out if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Authenticity is such a such a huge thing. You just have to write songs for you. The second you start like trying to be like, oh, what's gonna what's gonna be relatable? What's gonna be a hit? I feel like then you kind of lose the magic of it. Mm. Yeah. Are you still working on the second album right now? No, it's done. Is it turned in? I know. Are you done. going back and you're like, oh, I want to tweak this a little bit. Can I, I go mean, back and do this? A little bit. I'm giving it like a little bit of a, I'm, I'm taking a, a, a breath from it for a second. I feel like I need to come back with fresh ears and maybe maybe I'll be like, oh, I wish I could have changed that. But I'm actually really, really proud of it. And I worked very hard on it for a long time. So I don't know. And I, I feel like it's hard to it's hard to be like, oh, this one thing. Because I think it, I think that an album is supposed to represent an era of your life and I think that's just what it should be. It should be a timestamp. It shouldn't be like the most perfect thing you've ever made. You know, you can strive for that, but I think that it encapsulates an, an era of my life that I'm really proud of the way it turned out. So second album, are you one of those people that you're like, all right, the second album has to be, are you constantly in competition with yourself? Like, oh, the second album has to be better than Tower or it has to, do, you know, do better. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You know, I was like that at the beginning, but I think it was actually a pretty unhealthy mindset for me to be in. I was just constantly like, oh, how am I going to beat this? Or, oh, I have to have another driver's license or a song like driver's license or a song as good as driver's license. I'm like, I'm never going to make anything good trying to recreate something that I already did, you mm-hmm, know? So mm-hmm. I think I just had to get out of that mindset. And once I started just thinking to myself, like, what is a song that I would like to hear on the radio? Let me try to write that. Right. Then, you know, that's when the real magic happens. So let me tell you, I played Vampire. It was a Thursday here in LA. And I, I when I heard this, I was like, Ooh, <laughs> masterpiece! Thanks. I, I I absolutely love it, and I and I hope the rest of the album is like that too. You know what I'm saying? Just like hit after hit after hit. Sour was like that too. I mean, bang after bang after bang. <laughs> One can only hope. I yeah. mean, you know that's the case. I feel like that's that's how you roll, though. I feel like you're hella talented, you're hella creative, and that's what we're gonna get. You know what I'm saying? Oh, thank you. Um, very well, sweet. Will the second album be documented as well, like the first one? Like like films? You mm-hmm. mean? Uh, yeah, we did a little bit of it. Um, maybe not as much as the first album, but the, there's, there's definitely content on content for the second album, yeah. Are you good with just, like, letting go when it comes to, like, being documented, like, with documentaries and stuff like that? Yeah, it's a little hard. Um, I mean, just in everyday life, it's kind of okay, but writing a song for some reason is just so intimate. It's so vulnerable, like, the thought of somebody kind of watching you do it is kind of scary. You feel very naked. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Do we'll you? see what we can get. Yeah. I mean, it's super vulnerable. I mean, even like vampire, it's, um, it's very intimate. It's these very intimate feelings that I feel like I was kind of struggling to even talk about, let alone like sing about. And mm-hmm. I think that's the beauty of music is that you can kind of sing what is not always comfortable to speak. So yeah, it's very vulnerable. I love that. Yeah. I love that you can use music as a form of therapy to get whatever you need to get out, out. Yeah. Even just listening to it is so therapeutic. Yeah. It just makes your feelings in your head so much more simple. So you just be like, this is how I feel. You know what's funny? I feel like as a Pisces, first time I heard it, I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, <laughs> I feel all of these things. We're connected. <laughs> yes. Seven days apart. All right. Uh, before we go, do me a favor and tell me what are you working on next? Oh my gosh. I mean, I just I feel like I just finished this, but... um. I don't know. I'm just so excited to put this out and to tour it and get to meet people and see how the music resonates in the real world. It's it's all very exciting and I'm very lucky to be here. And thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for stopping by. Of you course. are a pleasure. I, I love whenever I get to talk to a fellow Pisces. So thank you so much <laughs> for coming through. Of course. Anytime.